presentation titled Linking Data Through P20 Win, which is designed to help those interested understand why P21 is necessary to get its preschool through 20 and workforce information network P21 operates, and how data privacy is maintained while data are linked through P20 Win. Education programs in Connecticut. We reduce the achievement gap in finishing high school ready for what's next. Programs to support local work opportunities. No work. Identify programs that do work. Can we look to accomplish these things and maintain student privacy? Yes. We begin. We need information about students, programs, and outcomes. Without information, we are in the dark. Our students are important. We should know about what they need. We need some information about students, the programs that serve them, and the outcomes of students in those programs to understand what needs improving and what works. Before us are that information that is needed is located in different places, and there is a common identifier for linking data between these places. The Preschool Entity and Workforce Information Network, P20 Win, provides a ticket with a secure process for linking data while maintaining individual privacy. Linking while maintaining student privacy, keeping secure, abiding all state and federal laws, especially federal unemployment and insurance law, state law governing the use and protection of unemployment insurance data, FERPA, HIPAA, and the Graham H. Bliley Act at all times. Before any win can be of use, information is gathered by state agencies. They get served students and individuals. These agencies keep their own data for administrative and program improvement purposes. There are three Connecticut agencies with completed agreements to enable the linkage of data through P21. The State Department of Education, the Connecticut Board of Regents for Higher Education, and the Connecticut Department of Labor. These are secured in each agency's respective data warehouse or repositories. Not individuals moves from these secure repositories within state agencies until a rigorous review process is complete and legal sharing agreements are signed. This includes risk review, documentation, and agreements. Document the audit or evaluation needed, identifying exactly what data are required, and documenting why each element is necessary for the specific audit or evaluation to occur, occur, establishing individuals who will conduct the audit or evaluation as authorized representatives of a state education authority, and approving or denying use of the data by senior staff responsible for the data, and complete data sharing agreements established with the approval of the State Attorney General's Office. The foods test is an auditor evaluation of publicly funded education programs. Will the be of benefit to a state education authority? Has the request been reviewed for conformity to law by the Department of Labor if major employment data are needed? Is the work allowable by FERPA, HIPAA, Glam Leach Bliley Act, state and federal law? The data is bind. Why the data can be used? Why data can be used? Who can do the analysis? How long data can be used? And when data will be destroyed? The data restrict can be no disclosure to anyone other than those approved to conduct the analysis. No use of data for any other purpose. No use of data to identify any individuals. No use of any data about individuals to anyone. And no use of social security numbers, identifiers, or dates of birth in the data set being analyzed. So how do anyone work? work? After the documentation, rigorous review, and paperwork are complete. Only the amount of information will be linked. Let's step an example. There are currently three entities in the state that have existing data sharing agreements to link it with each other through P20 WIN, the State Department of Education, the Board of Regents of Higher Education, and the Connecticut Department of Labor. 
Each agency has its own secure repository or repositories of data needed to conduct normal business operations. For example, an auditor evaluation has been approved, the appropriate review has been completed, and the necessary data sharing agreements are in place. Only the agencies whose data are needed for the auditor evaluation link their data. In this example, we use two agencies for simplicity. The processing data for the auditor evaluation begins within the security of each agency. Each develops the data files that contain the data necessary, approved, and documented in the data sharing agreements for a specific auditor evaluation. Let's look at what happens within one agency. A file is created. That file is split into two parts. Contain data fields that are needed to match records. For example, first name, middle name, last name, date of birth, and data sign, student ID, or social security number. This part contains the rest of the required fields for the audit evaluation. Personal identifiers are in the second part of the file. It could contain demographic information, course information, test scores, other data needed for the auditor evaluation. The number is then attached to each record. This becomes the fake ID for conducting the match and the key to linking data in the future without the use of personal identifiers. The mean number or fake ID is not retained for use in the future, it is not retained in the student file, and it is specific to an approved or evaluation. This process simultaneously within each agency whose data are required for a given audit evaluation. The data created, the file to separate the personal identifiers for matching from the rest data needed for analysis. Meaning fake IDs are attached. Now ready to be linked. The link occurs at the Department of Labor. The department trusted with this part of the process due to their long history of safeguarding identities, social security numbers, and wages for all individuals employed in Connecticut. Only files that are necessary for linking data are sent to the Department of Labor to be linked, and they are sent via a secure file transfer process. File processed by a software program that can match records when shared identifiers are missing. This is called probabilistic data matching. The result is a matrix of the fake identifiers, a number, and the original personal identifiers used to conduct the match. It brings together records for the same individual. If John Smith was served by both agencies, then the information from the two agencies will be brought together into the same, same group. You can see the apple is in group AA, the same for Sue Scrim in row 3 and Meg Nod in row 5. In some cases, there will be no match. Realize the visual. So these and the fake IDs can be seen together. The left columns create a matrix of meaningless group IDs and fake IDs. Identifiers used to link the data are void. It does not contain any identifying information or any student record information. The main is then sent by a secure file transfer to the authorized representative who has been authorized to conduct the auditor evaluation. What is the going to do with a table of meaningless group numbers and fake IDs? Remember, agency created two files, one for matching with identifiers and one for analysis without identifiers. We put the first half to create the matrix of fake identifiers. Next and file set of files will be used. The second file that contains only the data for analysis no identifiers is also sent to the authorized representative. Or evaluation can begin. For the evaluation is conducted, and personal identifiers are in the data sets. There are redacted 
selected student records only, and there is biometric data present. Finished, additional review is required before any information can be released for use. This ensures that the final data tables of report contain only aggregate data. Data used during analysis are edited. Our evaluation is complete and the information can be used to improve education programs. Thank you for watching this presentation. The Twin Team welcomes your feedback. If you have questions or comments, please come to me, the P20 Manager, Jan Keeney at 860-723-0236 or kihnej at ct.edu. Thank you for watching.